Hello, welcome to the Style Life Innovators series. I'm Liz Lundry, and today I'll be talking to Ann Rice. Ann has been a clinical hygienist for over 30 years. She's an educator, a published author, and a brain researcher. Ann founded Oral Systemic Seminars in 2017, and now devotes her time, focus, and study primarily to dementia prevention. She's a certified dementia practitioner, a longevity specialist with the Alzheimer's Research and Prevention Foundation. She completed the Bail Donine Preceptorship and is a fellow with the American Academy for Oral and Systemic Health. Anne is included in an international consortium of a diverse network of brain researchers, clinicians, and institutions who support Alzheimer's prevention. Welcome, Anne. Hi, Liz. Thanks for having me. This is a Thank delight. Thank you. you. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today. Okay. Uh, the work that you're doing is fascinating. And as uh, dementia and Alzheimer's is a growing epidemic uh, mm -hmm. in the U.S. and worldwide, this is really something that all of us need to be focusing on as well. So yes. you've been following your passion uh, to prevent cogn cognitive decline. You know, tell us about what you're doing. I'm very lucky. Um, it was a passion that then turned into a job. So that's always wonderful. I had published a paper a couple of years ago and one of the leading researchers here in the United States, Dr. Richard Isaacson, kind of took me under his wing and he totally supports the oral health component in the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. And so I've worked with him at Weill Cornell and at Florida Atlantic, and now we're at a group in New York, the Atria Institute. Um, and it's great and it's fun and exciting and new and different. There's research, as you know, comes out every single day. And it's really about inflammation um, with periodontal disease. And you've spoken about this before, right, with different pathogens. I think we need to open that up a little bit more of what providers can actually do, not just about slaying that bacteria, but assessing blood pressure, dealing with sleep, all of the other things that we do within our practice, which are all considered modifiable risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. And we are in a great position, relationships, right, with our patients that not other healthcare providers have. I, I think that we really can change, make a difference in these patients' lives. Yeah, absolutely. And we have this opportunity uh, to do these screenings, which also where more and more of us are looking at airway and oh. it has to do with sleep and, and, and everything. If you can't breathe, nothing else really matters. I always say that because exactly, uh, and we are in primed. We're in the perfect position to help our patients with that education and referrals too. So yeah, that's something we all uh, together uh, as a community need to always make sure we are doing. And I see in your work, uh, you've developed some practical tools, you know, to help seniors and caregivers. I thought this was particularly fascinating. You have a series of coloring books uh, I for do. people. So uh, please tell me more about that. I do. It was a COVID project. So if you don't have um, family members that are in the dementia world or in any of these care facilities, it's even in nursing homes and assisted living, there's a lot of coloring going on. It's a great focus. Um, a great opportunity to, to have them together in a community um, doing coloring. And we designed books. Uh, my son and I did during the pandemic. They're mandalas that are easier to do. You know, the intricate ones that a lot of people do, these are a little bit uh, spread out. So we have them for dementia patients. I also have a series for uh, the care providers that are a little bit more intricate because they're going to sit there also and can color with whoever they're caring for, which I will mention this. I just heard a statistic that there are 11 million unpaid caregivers right now for dementia patients. So we have caregivers all over everywhere. Um, we also designed one for visually impaired. You will see sometimes with Alzheimer's patients, their vision is going to change. Um, they're a little bit more difficult. And we know that as our seniors get older, sometimes that changes. So we have like a bigger border right on the outside and it, it's been, it's fun. We donate most of the money that we make back to Alzheimer's research. So that's just fun. I, I, I really understand that having had the experience in my own family with my father, who uh, was a diabetic and ended up passing away from 
a number of things, but mm -hmm. he definitely had dementia as well. And my mother was his caregiver. And uh, fortunately, they were they only lived a mile away. Now she lives with me. But uh -huh. having gone through that process and the stress for the caregiver, uh, because it's a 24-7 sort of job, if it's a family member, uh, really takes it, it home. So uh, we right. need to remember taking care of the caregivers as well. Yes. Uh, so as clinicians, as you, we were talking about earlier, uh, screening our patients, having discussions with them, finding out their own risk factors from their family history. You know, if there is a history of Alzheimer's or dementia, then, you know, we need to make sure they understand that connection, which people don't always think about that, you know? No. So I know that you also have uh, the Oral Systemic Seminars uh, organization that you founded and you're educating uh, the public and healthcare providers about the process, the dental connections and prevention of Alzheimer's. So uh, share with us your mission as an educator and you know how you help these dental practices and others to really step up uh, to the plate on this so we can really make a difference in our patients' lives. It With Alzheimer's disease, it's about prevention. We do not have preventive neurologists out in the world. And prevention is the same steps that you would think about, diet, exercise, all of the things that we can change, behavioral and lifestyle, and then the medical interventions. You know, it's not chasing diabetes for 20 years not getting on medication, right? There's so many different steps. And you as a provider can really look at all these different things on a health history. It, just like you said, if you had a patient that the mother has Alzheimer's disease, now that's not a guarantee that this patient is going to get it, of course, but really pay attention to that a little bit more, pay attention to their oral health. When we talked about, excuse me, when we talked about the care providers, if somebody in your practice is a care provider of anyone, whether it's dementia or any other ailment, pay attention to their oral health, pay attention to their blood pressure. As we know, heart health is intricately woven in brain health. So we need to really, um, in the operatories, scrutinize blood pressures and keeping up to date with our patients. Right. And as we're educating them about that connection, it's one thing to, because uh, I also train dental practices and, you mm -hmm. know, really want uh, and encourage the hygienist to do a series of screenings and then weaving that into that conversation, because as we're trying to provide care for them, uh, again, it's up to us to connect those dots. Correct. About oral systemic and about the transmission of these pathogens, it makes sense to take blood pressure because if we don't include that in the dialogue with our patients, they'll say, well, why are you taking my blood pressure? You know, right. Friday, some will say, I don't want that. And then we discuss yeah. further why, you know, that's right. important. And uh, they appreciate that so much. So uh, do you have any uh, final thoughts that you'd like to share with uh, um, doctors and clinicians uh, watching us today? Yeah, I, I am doing what I do. And when I started doing oral systemic seminars, because it was about education, it was prevention, things that I didn't know. And I'm following the model that um, Dr. Richard Isaacson has put into play, the first methods paper. This isn't hocus pocus, um, crazy things. This is all based in science. And it's little steps that you can help with your patients, you can do in your own life. I think that if we do things ourselves, isn't that easier to translate to our patients? Um, any little bits of things that you can do, really focus on your own sleep, prioritize it go to bed a little bit earlier, uh, focus on yourself, focus on your family members, reducing stress. I, we're in dentistry. So really put some of those boundaries in place. There's too many tips and tricks, but that's why I came up with what I did. So I appreciate your time today, Liz. That is brilliant what you're doing. Uh, we appreciate it so much. So your coloring books are are on Amazon and then they are a link also uh, to oral systemic seminars so that we can help many, many more clinicians help their patients and to be really effective. So, Anne, thank you for your time today with us. Thank you. And thank you everybody for joining us today. So we look forward to reconnecting with all of you when we interview our next innovator. So thank you all everybody and uh, stay well and stay happy. Mm -hmm.